Hi, uh, welcome to the latest ITAD in 15. I'm Steve Mellings of Adisa, and I'm joined today by Chris Littlewood, who's the Managing Director of Data Safe Solutions. Welcome, Chris. Hi, Steve. Nice to see you again. Now, Chris, you've just completed your product assurance with some new uh, new appliance, I'm going to describe it, which you're bringing to the data sanitization market space. But you've been around the sector for a long time. So for those of you who may not be familiar with you, just, just give a little insight to your background. Oh, good. yeah, uh, I have been in a long time, uh, showing my age. Uh, I've been in IT asset disposal since 2008. I've uh, run my own business's ecosystems uh, for a long time. And then we moved uh, very seriously into data destruction and data destruction products in 2017, and then launched uh, data safe solutions really on a, on a live aspect ratio this year. And I mean, we've known each other a long time. In that time, um, have you seen any change in customer attitude towards data sanitization? Is it, is it seen as a real challenge yet or are they still ambivalent to it? Uh, from what we're seeing, we're seeing a, a, a very big change in attitudes to uh, data protection, data destruction for end of life equipment. Uh, you, you know yourself, Steve, you, you've seen many breaches in the past and clients are becoming even more and more weary of that. So we found, and, and that was part of the where uh, data safe solutions was born out was by clients asking, can we not only be the data controller, but also the data processor or have that done on site for us rather than have a third party take the data off site and then we're sort of working on a promise, not proof. So I suppose a really good example of that, the most uh, recent example uh, is our experience with uh, Salford City Council. Uh, and Salford have, have got a, a really big backlog of laptops and PCs, several thousand of them uh, over COVID, nothing had been processed. And what they wanted to do was they wanted to control the, the, the data processing with it themselves uh, on site. Uh, and also, rather than pass that equipment over to a third party, they wanted to retain some of that equipment so that they could get really heavily involved in local inclusion and social inclusion, so giving out donations, without having to have that background worry of, is there some data still on there? Yep. So our solution came about, we came in, showed them how to deal with, with, with stuff, um, and very quickly, it's, it's an easy uh, process to deal with, so it was less than an hour's training. Uh, and within that, two of their, two of their staff had processed 400 laptops, it's 377, but close to 400 laptops in the morning. And they took a certain amount of that equipment away for local inclusion, so they've got good causes. And because we had the specifications of that equipment, and we knew the type, the make, the grade, we knew it all worked because it got through the DSS, we were able to find them a buyer for that equipment from the ITAD marketplace that gave them a significant return back to them. So now as they're moving forward, their standard operating procedures are going to be, they're either going to do it themselves or at the moment what they're going to do is they're going to bring in an additional ITAD to run their DSS mobile for them on a charge basis, but they'll keep some of that equipment for local inclusion and then they'll sell the rest of the equipment back to the ITAD and that will probably put them in a profit basis rather than a negative basis. And I think it's really interesting to just to talk about that very subtle change because some people listening they may not say, well, that's what we've been doing for years. So what you're talking about is is a data controller or the owner of data for those who may not understand that term, um, who's responsible for that data, wanting to be more responsible, wanting to actually not release assets without being assured of data sanitization, but actually to own that part of the process within their facility, within their normal sort of security controls. Yeah. but also having the flexibility to bring third parties in to manage that process for them. Yeah. Um, what you mentioned, two other things there, which is really interesting, um, not, not only with that sort of greater interest in data standardization and aware of the risk, but also the value that the equipment can offer, whether it's from social value donation, which is fantastic, digital divide, 
it's dreadful that it exists in this country. We should be doing everything that we can to help that, which is brilliant. But also, let's talk the dirty word, money, generating yeah. revenue from redundant equipment. And those two um, motivators often seem diametrically opposed. But what you're able to do is, is what was your solution called? The DSS? Yeah, it's the DSS mobile. Um, so what you're able to do is to empower the user to actually a process some of the equipment themselves and make informed decisions because you've got a full specification and test report and things like that. Is that correct? That's that's exactly right. And it, the, the barrier to entry on that in the past uh, has always been time. Yeah. Uh, it, it's always taken too long. Whereas the solution that we've brought to the market that's past the, 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 the accreditation process uh, brings speed to that. And because you've got speed and accuracy uh, and you don't need a really big space, it means the ability to actually go and do that job on site is much more available. And you'll know yourself, Steve. I mean, we found it working as an ITAD ourselves, and, and your ITADs will see it, that a significant amount of their customers will be removing data buried devices from their equipment before they're giving it to a third party. Now, apart from the time issue that's got for the end client, it also reduces the profitability that the ITAD's got yeah. on refurbishing them and refreshing them. So if the job can be done on site and you've got complete whole equipment and you know it's tested, it's working, you've got all the specs, it means you can process that faster, less labor time, more profitability. And that's really what it's all about. And, and for those who are a bit more technically minded, let's talk about the time question. So uh, I'm, I'm guessing, I'm spoon feeding you a bit here, Chris, apologies. I'm guessing that we're talking about purge rather than clear as a technique to be applied. Yeah, in general, but it, it obviously depends on the data per device. Yeah. So the, the problem everybody's got is, is what's the device's capabilities? And then you've got a, a plethora of different solutions in which you can choose from. Whereas ours is different, is it communicates directly with that device, identifies the correct and most efficient method to deal with that, and then deals with it. So a prime example of that, Steve, which is a really good one for you, which I've not mentioned, is we took two server hard drives out of uh, a unit and we used it on a standard data rate process with no smart white method. And it took 12, it was, there were eight terabyte drives, took 12 hours, 32 minutes. But once it had gone through the smart white process and it was identified that it had an encrypted chip on the top of it, then we're into a completely different set, set of, uh, of parameters. And then we're talking a couple of seconds rather than 12 hours to clear, clear the system. So that's where it becomes, and you know and I know that as time progresses, more and more of the systems that ITALs are dealing with are modern capable drives. And that means we're not stuck with zeros and ones, we're at a purge, um, so there's better options available to get a correct method of data destruction. And I totally agree, I, I did a post on LinkedIn um, uh, this week, I think it was maybe even last week, talking about the maturity of the sanitization market space and the you know the change in architecture of, of equipment. And yeah. we, we're still seeing, we've got, we've actually got a product in the lab at the moment that's been wiping a drive. It's been taking about, I think it's been there for two days and it's just hanging and, and it's, it's not a great experience. And if I'm trying to do this on a customer site, that would be horrendous. Um, yes, whereas proper, software tools when they talk to the drives at the right level of of um of interrogation are able to actually process drives much 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 quicker or as we say fail good it doesn't yeah. support purge i'll fail let's move on um yeah. and i think it's the art of sanitization for many is not really understood and people still believe that it's it the only sanitization is a write command not using some of the inbuilt features of drives and clearly that's where time you, your point earlier on time was always an obstacle to doing it on client site and so the not the emergence because it's been around you know with nist 888 since 2014 the concept of purge but the more adoption of it by software vendors like yourself is seeing the benefit of time being able to be passed right. on to where you can do this type of activity. Um, so in terms of your product, Chris, it's, it's reasonably new, I think about a year or so. Um, 
are you seeing uptake from not only the customer base, your target market, so people who own and use data, but are you also seeing service providers show an interest in being able to offer this as a service on their customer sites? Yes, we are. We've got we've got three uh, distinct target markets. So yeah, we we speak to end user clients with big IT departments who, who want to deal with that themselves. Uh, and then we've got MSPs that want to go and do it on site. But we're also talking more and more to ITADs in general who see the benefits of our solution. You know, it's a standalone solution. doesn't need integrating. doesn't need 23,000 pages of documentation. You turn it on, it works. Um, they're seeing the benefits of that purely from time, power saving, labor savings. All of those things make it far more attractive instead of where you've got racks and racks and racks. You've seen the standard thing where we've got hundreds of PCs and laptops all lined up, you know, waiting for, for the process to finish. You can reduce that to a, a much more manageable level and process more by using the, the much smarter methods of, of data destruction. And that's why all parties across the board are very interested in the solution that we're, that we're providing. So thank you very much for, for joining me today. Um, I appreciate your time. You're, I think you're going to be at, at the conference in, in October. Yeah, I'm indeed. Um, I am indeed. So for those of you who want to come and chat to Chris about the solution, come and see him there. Um, but also, if you're interested in data sanitization and some of its nuances, come to the event, go to adisa.global, come to the conference, and hear the experts actually speak about this business process. And also expand on Chris's message, which is the opportunity that some redundant equipment can offer, not only from financial perspective, but also some of the social value. It's, it's very important that ITADs grasp an opportunity to be able to go on site. This is a fully charged opportunity that you can go on site and, did, and you know, in most cases, you go, I can't do that. It's too complicated. Whereas now you can do that and gain a much better opportunity of not only gaining the equipment, but charging for that for a value-added service as well.